are we connected here? Do I have you? Yes. Yes. Hi. <laughs> all right. Hello. How Anna, you? how are you? Thank you so much, first of all, for taking the time today. This is awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much for inviting me. Pleasure. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I have to say, truthfully, uh, Scary Stories was where my journey with your work started. And then most recently, uh, uh, finding out that you'd worked on okay. Barbarian was absolutely so, so awesome. So I'm very excited to dig yeah. into some of these things. Uh, it's it's uh, delightful, you know, to, to know as far as, you know, looking into and researching yourself, uh, the life that you've had with music and composition, as well as film with your family and in, uh, in, in, yeah. uh, in film as well. So uh, I want to say thank you, first and foremost, for taking the time today. This is awesome. I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, as far as as far as growing up in, in, in Moscow, you, you what what was, you know, your first time remembering going to a movie mm -hmm. or going to a movie theater, experiencing a movie? And, and uh, you know, what did you take away from that? You know, I know that your family's worked in film for a long time, but uh, what's your earliest memory with film? Well, I mean, I kind of grew up, I was pretty much born on the, on the movie set. And uh, so since I was, I don't know, like one year old, my mom, who uh, who is an actress, so she would take me to the set and like actually uh, some of the makeup artists or like, I don't know, costume designers would babysit me while my mom is uh, like <laughs> on camera. And uh, wow. so I kind of I kind of saw this this movie world from the very, very early childhood and I kind and I didn't like it. And I never mm. wanted to be a, a, an actress or a director. I was like, no way. So, so, uh, but like when I was five years old, I, I started to uh, to practice piano, uh, studying music, and somehow this really, really interested me. And um, pe teachers, my 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 childhood teachers say like when I was five years old, I could sit easily like six seven hours a day just on with uh, near the piano and just play and like you know experiment and write like not compose but like wow. you know like <laughs> like banging piano but kind of with <laughs> with, with uh, some some sort of interest and then so i was like pursuing piano career and also composing music till i was about 16 years old and uh at that moment my father who's like a film director very very famous one he he was finishing a movie and he was already recording the music with a, with another film composer and uh i was just playing something on the piano like some some piece of mine or improvisation of mine and he was like what what, what are you playing i said like oh this is like nothing like just a little 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 song and he said that, you know what i i really like it can you stop by tomorrow at the recording studio and i'll just play you some some footage and you'll just improvise this kind of stuff <laughs> wow. and so so i showed up and then basically I, re I, I like yeah i kind of improvised to the picture and he said like you know what you have like really really cool sense of like picture and music picture and sound things so you think you you should think about it and uh, so that was a kind of my first like thought of like yeah interesting maybe yeah maybe i can, I can <laughs> write something sometime for for movies so this was kind of my beginning with a with a music in movies and movie world yeah oh wow well, okay and yeah. And so you had gone, I mean, through school, even I know that you ended up coming over to M uh, USC for for uh, piano and composition, different things. Uh, were, were there other instruments early on? I know that you were mentioning even at five playing piano. Were there other instruments that you took on uh, orchestrally or even guitar or anything like that? No, actually, uh, like I'm, I'm kind of professionally trained uh, pianist. I play a little bit accordion. Uh, but then when you like, when you start, composing for movies and like you're buying all like this analog synth stuff and and this instrument and you kind of just try to play it you don't you don't really like do it really great but yeah. for recording like i can record some guitar or i can record some drums like even you know like something or i can oh, wow. try and like do something with the violin although i don't play violin but for example for fear street i recorded a bunch of like 
string instrument just scratching them although i don't play them like <laughs> kind of, i don't know how to play them but uh, it was it is very interesting I, this is my favorite part of the process like you kind of just collect this weird sounds and then especially for horror it's it's a great like opportunity because it, the weirder and the creepier the sound is it's great so you don't uh. need to have a, a really beautiful violin sound so you just you just start to like i don't know bang it and do it and scratch it and then you record it and process it and then it turns out oh shit this is so so creepy that's great <laughs> yeah. I, I, and, and and you know kind of even in reading too i know that you've mentioned uh untuned cellos but then even things like animals jaw bones and different yeah, things for yeah. percussive what have been some of the weirder items that you've taken you know into a into a recording uh, uh session Oh well, most like I recorded in my in my studio some 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 like I usually go to recording uh, space when I record orchestra or ensemble stuff. But like mm. in my whole studio, I do all possible weird things. Yeah, uh, bones. Uh, like I collect some sort of like I don't know. But then also like you you process. You can yeah, I don't know. You can record this sound and then process it and and pitch it down and then it sounds interesting. And for barbarian, I also recorded some some sort of different wood blocks, but then process them. And, and somehow it turned out to be, I don't know, interesting. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> okay. so, yeah. so that, that's, that's a great thing about, I think, especially for horror, because like when you work in, in drama genre, it's a little bit like, you know, you have to be more conventional and like, you know, string melodies and things, but like for horror, horror you can do craziest craziest shit ever yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah well I, I know i i mean and I, I love that too you know just kind of hearing some of those things or even some of the movies nowadays where you have like the witch or uh hereditary yeah. and there's very earthly sounds and i know that you've mentioned that as well you know keeping uh, i believe it was fear street uh the yeah. 1666 where you had mentioned you know having very earthly tones and different things yeah. uh you know from that that first time recording piano to screen uh, how did it initially come into as far as uh, developing other things as far as instruments or taking, you know, pedals and down tuning? You mentioned some of that. Where did where did that come into into your process? Well, well, yeah, first of all, it, because studying kind of classical music and classical composition, like most of my film music were like orchestral and, and you know, like mostly like pencil and paper even. But then when, when you start doing it, you figure out, oh, you actually really need technology for it. And then you, you like, I'm kind of good, like, I don't know why I'm just, I have a sense for technology. Like somehow I just really like figuring out stuff on computer and things. So I, 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 I'm self-taught in computer. Uh, like, wow. yeah, you start working in, in like different doors, like, like, like it work, I work a lot, like whatever. But then uh, after a while, you figure out, oh, you don't, you you really need some more sounds than the just sample libraries, and then you figure out some some analog tones or like, and you figure out how to record yourself. And it's it's kind of never ending process and very <laughs> interesting one because like sticking is sticking with um uh, uh with just orchestra like can be you know like you kind of you you limit yourself with the sounds and when this was like you know combination of sounds. i mean it's it's a huge palette of course orchestra but nowadays of course the orchestra needs some more synth elements even in in it like you mixed in so mm -hmm. um so it was like kind of a long process of like very uh, traditional music making, uh, like just writing part of like score on a, on a, on a paper, but then figuring out, Oh, I can do this. And then I can try this. And, and it's kind of, uh, um, that's, 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 I, I guess it's a usual pro pro process for, for most of the film composers, but that's yeah. also what I do. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And, and I, I just think it's interesting, uh, maybe even in the transition from uh, being, you know, orchestra, uh, like a, a trained in, in orchestra, and then kind of having this transition where someone's asking, hey, can you do things uh, that are very out of that realm, you know, kind of pushing you out of like, okay, this is kind of my comfort zone. Have there been times where, where you've done something that maybe even you were hearing and weren't the biggest fan of, but somebody else was like, no, this is absolutely what we what we want for this just from your your training in the orchestra 
I, I didn't under quite understand what you mean. <laughs> so as far as like all the time that you've been, you know, working yeah. in orchestras and, and, and doing, you know, d different things as far as yeah. composing, uh, yeah. anything, you know, as far as maybe even like the, the, the playing with jaw bones or doing things yeah. more uh, uh, natural, has there ever been anything that you initially heard and maybe weren't a big fan of, but somebody else had heard and they were like, that is exactly what we want for this. Well, I mean, with, uh, with uh, Zach, with Barbarian, uh, it was interesting because I actually only had three weeks to score, um, um, to score the whole movie. And then, um, <laughs> Yeah, it's it's not a lot a lot of time, and because of that, we didn't have like so much time with Zach to figure out like different concept concepts or like different you know let's try this. So, so we were like kind of on like on on the clock, and basically he would come to my studio and he would like yeah you know what for this one let's try record me scream and then i i kind of record him and i was like no dude this is not working he said no no it's working great <laughs> let's let's do it and then <laughs> or so we had a for Bavari, we had like incredible incredible process it was very intense sometimes i was already pissed off because i was like dude like you can't do spend days in my studio just recording. Like, I, need, I, need some, I need some privacy as well but he was like no like we don't have to let's do this let's try this so um but it was like, <laughs> like so for barbarian i have to say this was my first ever experience and like the director would be so involved like so hands on on music uh he would barely like oh. uh, like uh, you know this this is kind of a uh, weird <laughs> weird um uh, phrasing but like frame fuck <laughs> you know like, basically, <laughs> like, like oh two frames to the left this sound goes like five frames to the right you know this kind of thing so <laughs> it was intense but it was it was interesting and i think it uh, it worked out great at the end yeah oh wow yeah I, I i have to i have to say too um like i'd mentioned before you know with scary stories that was kind of where my journey had had noticed and from the music yeah. and and uh you, you and your co-writing and work with uh within that movie but um, seeing Barbarian, that was absolutely an experience that I'm so happy I got to see in theater. Absolutely loved it. I'm glad that people love that movie. Uh, I've just been I've been looking for the soundtrack online to see if they were going to do anything. Have has there been any yes. mention as far I mean, as a... I kind of I kind of just like yesterday or like last week uh, uh, the the studio reached out and said that they're going to release soundtrack. So oh man, it's it's, it's it's coming. I guess like soon. I don't know, but uh, yeah. And I mean, it's it's funny because when I got the movie. And uh, uh, like uh, basically, the studio sent me the picture to to watch to to watch it, and then we had Zoom on the next day with the director because we had to start working. And then I it was at night. I started watching this this like new movie I might work on, and then it was like the creepiest and the scariest movie I ever watched. So I couldn't. <laughs> I actually couldn't watch it from the beginning, so I was skipping parts. You know, like when, when for example, Tess was in the basement first time going, I was like, no, I can't say it. Like I just skipped. You know, <laughs> <laughs> so when I was talking, when I had my first conversation with the director, I kind of didn't, didn't know what's going on in the movie for, because like, yeah, yeah, it's it's a great movie, but like, oh, shit, I, I couldn't. It was so so intense for me. Oh um, man, but, I love but that. But it's funny because I noticed like in the beginning you're so afraid of the movie like you kind of really the the pictures just like frightens you all the time but then towards the end of the process like you're like whatever like this frame i know this frame i know like you're not scared at all <laughs> it's, it's kind of you're you're getting used to it yeah yeah i love that I, I, and you I touching on that I, what one yeah. of the things i thought was hilarious uh was the fact of You'd mentioned in an interview that you're not actually the biggest fan of horror, even though you've gotten a lot of jobs as of as of recent uh, in yeah. the uh, in the genre. You know, whether stuff that you've worked on or maybe things that you've uh, seen, you know, even off screen not working on. Does anything come to mind as far as a, a particular scene that is just forever ingrained in your brain? Something that might be scary or even in a drama film. Uh, you know, a, a scene that comes to mind that's something that you can just never forget, but is, you know, from a movie, nothing real. Um, well, I guess uh, it was a f funny, uh, funny experience because when I, was, when I started to, uh, to score Scare Stories to, to Tell in the Dark, 
I was I was working like I have my studio in the basement and mm-hmm. I was by myself alone and then um my whole family kind of left for vacation whatever I was like just in my studio living in my space and then and then I I was actually so frightened writing this thing because like when it got got dark and I'm at home alone and and I'm like <laughs> I'm writing this really creepy music which makes me kind of susp- like which suspends me a little bit you know like this kind of high strings clusters and stuff and I'm like and at some point it was so nerve nerve wracking for me so I was like. <laughs> Fuck, fuck no way when it's 6 p.m i start working on the movie because i just can't stand it in the dark it's too much for me so so oh for me it was God. like the first process like after years, like sometimes it's like even frightens me my music so yeah that is awesome i i yeah. love that I, and, and and you know touching on scary stories uh i know that you've mentioned that um, you weren't overly familiar with the stories initially, but you, uh, you know, in, in, in Russia there, you had had your own kind of variations of that. What were, what were some comparable uh, stories to that that maybe uh, you would loved when you were younger and, and something that might have been something along the lines of a scary stories type book? Well, I think that most of uh, actually uh, kids' books and tales, they're very, very frightening and, and <laughs> actually cruel, I would say. Like, for example, Agreed. Green Brothers, like all the all the tales from Green Brothers, they're like actually kind of a sadistic, sadistic <laughs> horror movies. So, I mean, it was interesting for me to know that there's like a s- specific book series in the United States dedicated to this kind of genre. Was mm-hmm. was interesting. I read the whole book. It was interesting for me which novels the the screenwriters would pick for this thing, and I think it all played uh, very nicely together. But uh, but uh, writing music for for this movie, like I have to say that I had this, we me and Mark we had this concept of like each monster or like each novel has a has a different instrument group that it's it's kind of focused on like for example Mm -hmm. the the pale lady was a uh woodwind instrument centered kind of novel or whatever (laughs) uh the the jangly man was a percussion thing so it was like interesting to find the concept for each monster and then combine it together and you know like do it as a whole soundtrack so yeah, yeah. I mean, with yeah. with those particular sounds too, you know, and those being assigned to the characters, was there anything behind, uh, you know, I, I know that you mentioned like with the jangly man and it being percussion, was it kind of like a play on the actual name or uh, was it just more of the scenes to where you kind of felt out, oh, this might be a woodwind uh, section centered? No, well, I mean, uh, f- f- I, I find it very important to to come up with a, like a whole concept, like what's the soundtrack is going to be, I mean, sound wise and and or like you know. So for for example, when I started to work on scary stories, I thought like, okay, I have to divide these characters and these stories and this this novels. Although the whole score needed like an orchestral sound, I thought like, what could be the difference between this the 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 the, the, the stories, you know? And mm-hmm. I kind of figured out that. Yeah, if I just play, for example, the I don't know if you watch. Oh yeah, you watch the movie, but basically yeah. the 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 hospital pay lady sequence where the, the she she's like pulling this the guy. Uh, mm. It was like it's mostly processed woodwind instrument playing like contrabassoon, and then uh, like I had some some uh, bass clarinet stuff. So I mean, it's kind of it's interesting where you focus on, it, and it it helps you to to go through the scene for me uh, like I find it like when I have a concept like I said I stick with it I don't jump to different instruments I just have this this palette and then it kind of keeps me through the through the sequence um for for barbarian uh as I said like I I created a lot of wood wood woody sounds like like different wood blocks and stuff and it was kind of also very raw but also a lot of analog synths. So this was my concept. And I, I was not really kind of, I was, I would stop myself. I said, oh, let, let me try to use like, I don't know, flute. Like I said, no, there's no flute in my movie. And, uh, <laughs> so, so I think that it's just help for a composer 
but at the end of the day, it just really builds the 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 concept and this soundtrack as 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 you know as a y- unique thing, right? Like, you know what I mean? I don't know. No, I, 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 I yeah. that's I mean, I mean it's awesome and it's just cool and it, it's cool to hear all these things too. Uh, you know, as far as there being so many different uh, hands involved in film, you know, and especially I guess getting older and getting to do these interviews, it's always yeah. interesting just to hear all the stuff that goes into this too. And, and, and yeah. Barbarian, uh, you mentioned Zach being, you know, on hand. Um, what? So it was only very late in the project, correct? To where you ended up coming involved into the project? Yeah, I think, I think, honestly, I, I think there were like, I was kind of a replacement composer because, uh, yeah, otherwise I can't explain it. It was like such a big movie and they, they've been working for like, basically I got already a final cut version. So it was no changes in the picture. Uh, yeah. So, but then they said like, okay, Dob is in three weeks and here's the movie. Let's try work it out. And uh, being Zach so involved really helped me and I mean it, it was like my first experience was like this kind of in- involvement but it's he's like it's it's his deb- debut movie and it's his baby he like controls every second of it every like <laughs> little sound of it every you know he he's like so crazy about this this, <laughs> this work of him uh, and I mean I I just I think it's it's very respectful yeah <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I mean, it, it is incredible too. It was very wild to see that uh, it was, you know, his debut picture and just all of the people that were in it and everything about it. I mean, everything felt like it was very well organized and right, you know, to the T with everything. So uh, yeah. even up no, until I mean, that point. But it was funny because I was like, the whole concept of the movie, I was like, who would write this idea, the whole craziness? Like, and then after spending <laughs> three days already in my basement with him, I was like, Dude, like I'm sitting in the basement with this guy who wrote all this crazy, the, the whole the stair, crazy story <laughs> about the basement. Like, what was I thinking about? <laughs> That's crazy. Oh my god! You're like here I am, just down in <laughs> my own basement alone with this guy. I don't yeah. know what exactly. <laughs> and he's and he's just screaming on in the mic like, let's record this, like. <laughs> 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 oh my god and so i mean as far as your, your home studio you know that you mentioned you have in your basement there are there you know over over the years and over time uh particular pieces that are very like this i i have to have this if it was somewhere else that you were flying uh that are very you know rudiment to your day-to-day as far as work and and what are some of these pieces as far as um that people are you know trying to take this on or uh you know even just learning uh well you know what um Many, many years, I mean, actually, actually until the, the war started, I was so, uh, my, my life was so divided between, between uh, LA and Moscow. And um, because I would spend a lot of time there, but also working there. And so I kind of minimized the, the, my setup. So I, I tried to make it work for me, no matter where, where I am. Hmm. So I have like, a, actually I work on MacBook Pro. I mean, I don't know if you're in, like asking me about this, this specific techni- the technical stuff or like what, what the question yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, I have my MacBook Pro. It's like loaded with a lot of like, you know, memory, RAM, whatever thing. Hmm. So, uh, and um, then once I, once I travel, I just have this kind of the same uh, like not travel but like when I when I go to Moscow I have the same like just a screen and uh, like a keyboard so I kind of plug plug in my uh, MacBook Pro and I have the same set uh, the problem the, sometimes it's just more difficult with uh, recording stuff where I go places mm-hmm. but um, um, but I mean I just if I really need to record something I'll just find a way to to find a studio or maybe I'll have a friend somewhere who can borrow me a mic so so yeah oh okay <laughs> okay it, is yeah. is there anything as far as you mentioned pedals and different things like that that you've kind of you know yeah, you've developed dep- a- like it just, it just depends if I'm in the middle of, pro- of of the project and I know what I now already need for it i would just take it with me like pedals or maybe like, like some even synth stuff but uh, uh but if uh if i'm just starting like or just i'm just writing whatever for myself 
yeah well whatever yeah. <laughs> awesome. no that, that that's, that's cool i mean I, I just appreciate you know all the the behind the scenes things and i i love hearing you know the different things as far as that what goes into these things uh you know the the stories with with scary stories is absolutely awesome and how you kind of broke off different branches and things mm -hmm. um as far as with Barbarian, you know, tell us about your, your first day working on that, you know, this being the most recent uh, uh, production that we, that we have here. And uh, what was the, you know, what was the first uh, piece that you, you took on as far as tackling or scene that you took on after watching the initial movie? Well, as I said, because we had so limited time, then I would just divide the movie in parts and, and kind of think, okay, Um, uh, so, um, basically because of, uh, wait, I need to, I need to, uh, uh somebody's calling me, uh, uh <laughs> not a problem <laughs> because it's on an icon. So I don't know. Um, <laughs> and, um, yeah, so I would divide the movie in the parts and I kind of started with this, this uh, beginning of this kind of horror thing when she just just first goes to the she finds the rope and 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 like opens the the door, and uh, because we figured out that we really want this wood sound and like kind of raw, kind of you you know the sounds but not really, mm -hmm. uh, so so I would start finding this uh, this um, sounds and process them, but. The, the actually kind of Zach was really focused on the opening scene and uh, like when she just comes to the to the to the house and uh, she, he had this idea of of weird weird voices underneath the house and this was like the most difficult actually cue because I, I think I had like seven versions of it to rewrite the problem was like n nobody except Zach knew what he wants and then it gets like he was like no, like this voice is not right. And like, let's try this. Ooh. And he's like, no, this one is no, but this one is <laughs> this one is much better. And I'm like, dude, that, I don't fucking hear any different. And nobody knows, like nobody, no music editor, no, I don't know, no producers. They would never, never tell what's the difference. But he was like, so, so I mean, actually, I started on the opening cue also like in the, on the first day of the, like of the scoring but i finished it on the very last day of the dub like it was like the last, the oh, last wow. day when we were like almost the movie was going to the you know the print master print and like it was the day when i finished the, the queue <laughs> oh my <laughs> god that is insane well, yeah. and so did you receive the movie with um is it called test music or i, I can't think of what the, the actual term is but it's called uh, it's called temp music yeah temp me okay okay did you yeah. receive it with anything over that or was it just all no, of course it... no no i mean as i said it was like already kind of like finished movie with the uh, temp music and i guess one of the little problems was that he was the zach was already very much attached to it like and kind of really liked it and because he's such a one man show uh, guy so he really picked all the all the little sounds all the little chunks of music he really liked and so it, it was it was it was not easy i didn't have so much freedom like you know mm -hmm. going but when we when we first talked about the temp music he said like yeah i really like how it all plays out but we can more we can do it more exaggerated you know like more 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 interesting let's go more crazy more wild ways <laughs> uh and uh, so i was kind of following his you know like the temp was really na navigating me but on some scenes i would like really go like nuts and say like Fuck the town. Let's try this. Let's go. It, 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 it works much, much better. And and he would and he would agree. And that's that's interesting. That's nice. Yeah. Oh man, so, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I I have to say that's honestly been one of my favorite movies that's come out in a long time horror wise i, I absolutely I, I love horror um and and even you know from fans that aren't just the mystery behind everything uh you know in the movie coming out and they're not being very much in the trailer 
it was a it was a very awesome payoff, and uh, uh, fans have absolutely loved that. So that's a that's a that's a great movie, and I was very happy to see uh, your name at the end as far as the score credits. I'm like, holy Thank shit! You. Well, no, no kidding. <laughs> no, yeah, I think it's it, it is very very talented, and I mean, uh, and it's funny because we recently spoke with Zach, and I said like, what's what's your next move? And he's like, I don't want to do horror. Now I'm doing like a like I can tell what, but like totally different genre, and I was like, yeah, that's interesting. Now you don't, you kind of, he doesn't want to stuck with a horror thing. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's great. Yeah, yeah, because he, I, I can't remember what the damn name of the TV show is now. Um, I read something the, about that he whitest, was doing an animated white, series. I think he was the in the the whitest kid or something yeah, yeah. Show, something, yeah. <laughs> I, I feel that i'll go back and re-edit the audio here where we actually say <laughs> the name of the the tv show perfectly yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> okay, <good. laughs> no uh yeah so i mean it, it is interesting to see you know as far as like never making a movie and then this being his first thing and it just being such a big production um i, I love that that's that's absolutely awesome what no, but what you is know what honestly oh, this is my second movie of working with a director who used to be a actor and it's it's a really really pleasant uh, pleasant experience because I hmm. uh, the movie I did with Josh Rubin uh, oh yeah uh, yeah mm-hmm. was um, I I personally really like this this one it's called uh, Werewolves Within okay. yeah. and uh, and I I just I just felt these guys they know so well the process of movie making that they really know the drill and it's it's really interesting is i i found that they know how to make movies sometimes even better than kind of the directors who are like just directors you know yeah right okay yeah, yeah. i i think you know it, it makes uh that experience you know so much more fun as far as uh from anything you know even in it, over over uh working in russia or over here you know have you had certain times obviously not names or anything like that but yeah. uh where you know you just have something where you're like man oh man I, i'm having a pretty tough go here and uh i'm gonna try to get it get something that you want but it's this is hard <laughs> yeah um no i i you know honestly this is this has been uh incredible uh i appreciate and uh you know the time here ha, uh, do you are you working on on further pictures i'm assuming correct I haven't seen anything for a recent, but oh well, well, Barbarian just came out, and uh, mm-hmm. there was like another. It was like kind of a thriller movie called Jane that came out on. Um, oh yeah. On the platform called uh, Creator Creator Plus, something like this. Okay. Um, and uh, but uh, now I'm just starting a, um, a a new project. It's a documentary and. Uh, I really like that now I have a little change from, you know, from from horror thriller genre and, and going to something totally different. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Yeah. That's uh, I mean, it, it's great to, you know, to, to have those things. And I know it's, uh, you know, you've kind of mentioned over in Russia, you know, getting uh, very big accolades as well as over here. And so now you kind of are in a spot that you can kind of choose and, you know, go as far as different projects that come uh, come about. So, uh, I mean, that, that's, that's great. And this is, uh, this is, yeah. this has been awesome to have the opportunity. I really appreciate you being able to hop on here and, uh, hopefully we can have you on again here, you know, with, uh, with further, uh, uh film endeavors. Yes. With pleasure. I would, I would love to, I'll, I'll have some more stories to tell. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Thank no, you so I, much. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for the time. Thank you you take so care. Much. Have a good day. Yeah. You too. Have a good summer Sunday. Bye. Bye. He's a low fi horror guy. Yeah, he's kind of a guy, but he is so low fi, low fi horror guy. Yeah, baby, baby. Low fi horror guy has been recorded in front of.